For our final segment of the day, we're going to turn to a little organizational psychology. And one of the things that we really like doing here at Quality Digest is to present uh, new voices to you that have unique insights. And when those new voices quickly become among our most popular authors, well, that's just gravy. That's all the better. Our next guest, Kelly Graves, is the author of a multi-part series on the building blocks of organizational psychology that has appeared in Quality Digest Daily over the past few months. We published his latest article, 10 Steps to Better Executing Your Strategic Plans, on June 30th. So, Kelly, welcome back to the show. How great are you? Great to be here, Mike. How you been? I've been doing great. Good, good. You look good. It's hot here in Chico, though. It is. It's hot here in this room, but, you know, it's cooler <laughs> than it was last week. I'll, I'll take true. anything under 100. We, I think we had 109 last week. Is that what it was? Something like that. So, it was, it was, uh, it was warm, yeah, but it was, it's all right. Yeah. So, good to see you. Well, let's start with, with strategy. Okay. And you, you talked about strategy in, in your piece, which I thought was really interesting. Right. Um, why does strategy, big S, capital S, why does strategy, you think, why does that intimidate people? What is it about that that makes people kind of close up a little bit? You know, I don't know if strategy itself uh, closes up people or even makes them nervous. I think strategy, any kind of planning, people do very easily, much like the New Year's resolution, mm -hmm. where we all make them, mm -hmm. and very few people play them out. And I'll give you an example. I go to the gym three or four days a week try to, most of the time, three or four mm -hmm. days a week. And what I run into every year is that um, January 1st, you've got a ton of people yep. through January, and about February, early to mid-February, it fades out. And what I have experienced over the course of 15 years doing this, the same six weeks process happens when people return from a strategic planning meeting. Mm -hmm. They have good intentions, but firefighting mode takes over, they uh, find other things that are more important, and then they realize this is work. Mm -hmm. What they've done is they've planned, this, they've planned the strategy, but they haven't planned the steps to implement mm -hmm. the strategy. Mm -hmm. Behaviors are totally different than plans, and that's where it really starts breaking up. Mm -hmm. And is, is fear a part of that, you think? I mean, it, it always seems to me that when we talk about, about your work and we, we look at the mm -hmm. stuff you publish, there's always this underlying idea that people are fearful, fearful of change, and, and they're fearful yeah. of, of tackling strategy. You think that's part right. of it, too? It is. Uh, fear of change, everybody fears change, mm -hmm. and I think that's where, if you've read any of my stuff before, I talk consistently about communication. Mm -hmm. And that's where, uh, real quickly, we have to let people know what is the strategy. Most of the time, the executive team knows what it is, and maybe one layer below that knows some of the pieces, but if you were to walk around the average organization and say, what is our strategic plan, right. they wouldn't have any idea. And that's why I put in the article, if you don't have a clear strategic plan that everyone understands, you don't have a plan. Right. You have an illusion. Mm -hmm. Work your plan and plan your work, right? Isn't that exactly. what you mentioned at the beginning exactly. of Exactly. But people don't do that. Yeah. And that's where um, I believe that you need to start with, one, what are you going to give up? What mm -hmm. are the five things mm -hmm. that um, you're going to work on for this year? Mm -hmm. And knowing that most people have 500 things on their list, or let's say 100, let's use 100, what are the bottom 20 that you're going to not do? Mm -hmm. And when I ask that to the executive teams, they, they struggle with that. Mm -hmm. And if they struggle with that there, they're never going to be able to do that once they get back to the office. Mm -hmm. So being very clear, what are the 20 things that we're going to drop that yeah. we're not going to do anymore? What are the five things that we're going to focus on? And then most importantly, what are we going to do Monday morning? Mm -hmm. So just like when you go to college, you don't think about the semester mm -hmm. because you'll be overwhelmed. Sure. But when we look at the syllabus, what am I going to do every week? And if I each week say I'm going to do this piece each week, mm -hmm. the semester takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happens with strategic plans. Um, but the thing that we've got to focus on with people are the behaviors. Mm -hmm. How are you and I going to implement this and how are we going to change? And that's where the fear comes in. Yeah. I don't want to change. Mm -hmm. I'm fearful of change because it's an unknown. Right. Where when we can talk about um, what the end goal looks like, how that's going to help us, that's the destination. And if we can tell them this is what the journey looks like, mm -hmm. then that helps them go through the steps of change and the behavioral change, mm -hmm. and especially when you involve them mm -hmm. in, um, in the process of change. Yeah. 
And it's not just it's not just workers, you know, the people that are following the leaders that need mm -hmm. this help. I mean, you talk in there about you know how leaders tend to chop up into three different groups mm -hmm. and, and right. how they handle <laughs> this idea of strategy. Can you talk about that? I thought that was really interesting. It is. Um, I've ran into this so much over the years, it, it, it cracks me up. So we'll take an average organization, $100,000 a year organization, and you know, you've got a couple hundred employees, you've got the executives, they've been there, let's say there's, there's seven of them. And um, what I've noticed is you've got three or four that are really into it. We're mm -hmm. gonna make these changes. And they're really gonna try this year. Mm -hmm. And then you've got two or three that know that you know, the last 20 years, it's been flavor of the month. Mm -hmm. It usually fades after a while. So I'm going to kind of watch the group and see what they do. And then you've got the, the, the last two or three, I'll call those the prisoners. <laughs> and they're the ones that in their mind, they're going, we shouldn't be doing this. It's a yeah. waste of time. We haven't implemented it in the last 10 years. I'm not even going to try. Yeah. I'm just going to go do my thing yeah. because it's more important than what this stuff is. Yeah. And these are the things that I'm going to be being graded on is getting this product done, not implementing this new mm -hmm. so-called solution. And that's where I believe that when you're doing the strategic planning, the whoever's facilitating that for you, you need mm. to have some real honest conversations. Yeah. One, are we or aren't we? Yeah. And I break it down to something very simple. If I were, if you were to ask me to lose 20 pounds, mm -hmm. Let's do 30 pounds, significant. And okay. I say, I've tried that, I can't. Mm -hmm. I think that if you were to say, Kelly, you need to lose 30 pounds in the next six months or you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. That, that's okay, now it's like, okay, I don't wanna get up <laughs> early and I would like to have that donut, but I don't wanna die, so now I'm very motivated to. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's not a, a question of do I want to, can I, can't I, it's that I don't wanna go through the the uncomfortableness of yeah. change. And I think that's where people need to plan the change process better, the behavioral process, mm -hmm. involve the people. I say that a thousand mm -hmm. times, you <laughs> need to involve them. Yep. And then break it down into steps. Mm -hmm. So what are we gonna do this week, next week? Um, how are you going to change? How are you gonna help me change? Mm -hmm. Because if you're my supervisor, I'm your employee, we're a team. Sure. Um, most places don't have teams. They have groups of people that happen to work together Monday through Friday. But when it's um, imperative that my success is built on your success, then we start looking at it differently instead of employer employee, it's what's our objective? Mm -hmm. Let's win the Super Bowl. Right. And we need both of us to do that, exactly. whether we like each other or not. You well, know. you know what that comes down to is alignment. And, and yeah. I mean, strategy, again, strategy with the big S is, uh, to me, what makes that hard is, is getting people all in the same boat, mm -hmm. is the alignment of, of what everybody wants and needs to do right. their work really well. So in your opinion, what, what are the good ways that a leader can, can ensure alignment among the troops? Okay. One thing is don't make too many um, objectives. Basic, if we've got three major objectives that we want to do organizationally, um, that's, that's great. It's better to push three things five miles down the road than 100 things three inches down sure. the road, okay? Break those down to the department. If we've got three organizational goals, we might have eight or 10 major departmental goals. And then you and I as the uh, people within those departments, what do you and I have to do each day to change that? And it's the conversations. So when the strategic plan is developed with the executive team, you present it to the staff, you know, in our department, but then we say, okay, what are we gonna do differently? Mm -hmm. They have to help create it. I don't care how good the plan is, if we tell them, they're never gonna buy it. Mm -hmm. So that's where we have to involve them in the conversation. How are we gonna change? And give it to them as the challenge. This is what we have to do to change and I need your help. And most great leaders know to ask their people for help. Instead of saying, I'm God, I know everything. Sure. Say, you know what, even if you know the answer, ask your people, because they're gonna come up with great ideas. Mm -hmm. And those ideas and their um, uh, initiative is gonna be what's gonna drive it after that six week barrier, after the fun wears off, and this isn't any fun anymore, and this is change, and I'm uncomfortable, and there's new processes that's what's gonna drive it because you and I created it and we wanna be successful at what we create. 
So here's a question for you. It okay. kind of come to me as we're talking. Is, mm -hmm. is this idea that, that you're going to change. The company has to change. The organization mm -hmm. has to change for some reason. And, and many times what's driving that is the company's not as successful as it wants to be. Mm -hmm. How do you impart that, the need to change, without alarming people? I mean, people are going to hear, we got to make all these changes. Oh my God, are we going out of business? Am I going to lose mm -hmm. my job? You know, mm -hmm. How do you assuage that fear but also communicate, hey, it's, it's fine, we have a plan, we're gonna work this plan, it's gonna, it's gonna be successful, we need your help, right. without alarming people. It's kind of a fine line, isn't it? Yes and no. <laughs> For most organizations, they don't have a very good communication structure, and they don't have much trust. So they're used to leadership saying one thing and then doing something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's two sets of rules, one for the king and one for the people, right? And so it comes down to, we need to start having some honest conversations. And change is happening all around us. We're just allowing it to happen to us. And what we want to do with a strategic plan is say, we're going to chart a course. And we're going to have some control over our lives. And the main thing we have to give to people, that's why we want to invite them in the conversation. So they have some control over their life, over this journey that we're going to take. And it comes down to some leaders, managers, employees getting past uh, some of the lies that have been told, the fears, the masks, the things that we run into in, everyday, um, in the everyday world. But we really have to um, be honest about, do we want to achieve this? And if we do, then let's have those conversations and see it in people's eyes. They're going to say, oh yeah, we're fine. But if you see it, if you sense it, that's what you have to address mm -hmm. is, is the fear and say, if you want to do this, let's do this. If you don't, we're going to be moving this organization in this direction and we would love you to be part of it. Let's train, let's coach, let's develop, let's counsel in some cases. Some people are just fear of change because it comes down to, am I going to lose my job? No, you're not going to lose your job. If you can do these things, you might have to change your skills but that's life. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to evolve, especially in this environment. I'm working with a client right now that um, because of things with the internet, their industry is changing monthly. So they're having to shift very quickly in doing it on the fly. And so um, addressing things quickly, making the adjustments, and then applying those and making sure that we're doing things differently today than we did yesterday, which will make the improvements that we need for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And we need to measure those weekly, just like in grad school, you know, measure it weekly, have a plan, and, um, you know, change those behaviors. And, and there's ways, there's steps to changing behaviors. There's, ch there's steps of uh, changing habits. And there's some good work out there that I've done, that other people have done, um, about how you do that. So. Plans are easy to make. 95% mm -hmm. of the time, they're not implemented properly, consistently, and behaviorally driven. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good point. And, and really, Kelly, that's, that's, that's your bailiwick, really, I think, is, <laughs> is uh, organizational psychology. Uh, Kelly Graves has uh, contributed now three articles to us on this topic, uh, topics around this issue. And Kelly, it's always good stuff. Thank you for joining us. We'll have you back uh, for your next article, I'm sure. We'll be talking about this going forward. So Kelly Graves, thanks for joining us today. Thank you.